I believe that in the battle between power, man, and the powerful, nature, the powerful wins. Our first love was nature. Searching for our first love, I finally decided to walk on one of our glaciers. I crawled underneath it and into one of its blue ice caves. I turned to lay on my back, and I saw what appeared to be galaxies and planets frozen in time thousands of years ago. As I was looking at these beautiful shapes, forms, and colors in the ice, my mind went still, my past and future left me, and I experienced an endless space opening up inside me. What brought me here? Seven years ago, my partner suddenly collapsed in the street due to a massive stroke. Who we were and what we had changed in a split second. While he was in coma for weeks, the doctors tried to prepare me for what they believed would be a sudden death. But he was young and strong, and he survived against all odds. We lived in constant alert for two years. He underwent surgeries four times while he was in rehabilitation. I felt death was chasing us. And then, my youngest daughter got critically ill. Sometimes they were hospitalized in the same hospital at the same time. I lost confidence in life. I couldn't sleep. As I was consumed by constant fear that the worst would happen, I started to get panic attacks. I needed help, and I decided to go home and share my grief and my fear with my dad. My dad is 85 years old. He's still the strongest person I know, always hiking the wild mountains in the northwestern part of Norway, where he grew up. My father, he recognized that my grief was not the kind where people send flowers. My man was still here, but we had lost the life that we loved and a future that was planned. <laughs> My father said, we need to walk for one year, and we did. Spring. We started our walk in spring, but since I was a little girl, I have been longing to walk in my father's footsteps again, behind him on the trail. When I was little, I used to ask him, Dad, can you tell me a fairy tale? And he used to answer, let's go for a walk. And now, in spring, we started our walk by climbing the mountains in the most scenic valley in Norway, Oldedal, where my family has been living on a farm since 1604. Oldedal, my father's valley, is surrounded by the biggest inland glacier in Europe. Accompanied by singing birds, we walked for hours the first day. And when we reached the summit and had this powerful panoramic view in front of us, I became calm, still. And for the first time in many years, I felt that I could breathe again without fear of what would happen next. What was going on?
When you walk in rough terrain, your eyes must pay attention to the path and the surroundings. You have to consider where to put your foot, and every step you take is important. While walking in steep mountains, there is always danger present, so my focus and attention had to be in the here and now. So, I was freed of myself, and my personal problems were gone at this moment. To keep up with my father, <laughs> because he's like, <laughs> I had to breathe and I had to walk steadily. High up in the mountains, the weather is constantly changing. Wind, rain, lightning, sunshine, four seasons in one day, ending up in a double rainbow above us. As we walked, the terrifying images from the hospital that filled my head dissolved and were replaced by light, colors, and beauty. And my father, he told me, think about spring as your childhood and remember to smell the flowers like you did as a child. Spring turned into summer and abundance. Summer has always allowed me to explore the secrets and wonders of nature, Father said. And he continued, and he said that the sweetness of summer reminded him about his youth. Summer also allows us to walk on the glacier. I didn't know that glaciers sing. Did you know that? that the Earth's primordial forces that have shaped our fjords and landscape, it can be heard. The wind turns into tones and music when it hits the surface of the ice and descends into its crevasses. It is like an orchestra is playing down there in the depths. The dripping of water underneath the glacier sounds like a clock ticking. The enormous power of the waterfalls coming out of the glacier is both stunning, magnificent, but also frightening. In my lifetime, the waterfalls have never been bigger, Dad comments. We are losing nature as we know it. The warmth of the sun that is melting the glacier is also charging our batteries now. Can you feel that? Autumn. It's raining. The fog slides down the mountainside and rises towards the sky at the same time, constantly changing shape and density. My father is picking blueberries and I notice that he's smiling. The clouds move so fast in the wind and I Autumn is dancing before my eyes. I experience relief. I am transcending above thought. My mind is resting, and so is my body. My father says, think about autumn as adult life with all its sudden shifts. Let it drift. Who you are is deeper than the movements on the surface. Winter, less colors, blue, black, gray, white. The waterfalls are frozen, so is the lake. Old age, father whispers, winter is old age. In this ease and quiet, you can hear your own pulse. And the blood vessels of the earth are visible to you. Have you ever felt that, that your pulse harmonizes with her pulse, the pulse of the earth? We climb the snowy mountains and we reach the spruce, the big tree 
that my great-grandfather planted 130 years ago. He died when he was 40 years old, so my grandfather grew up without his father. But a tree in the mountainside grew up alongside him, and my grandfather used to say, Dad is watching over us. After walking through four seasons, my father says, after every winter, there is a new spring, let's keep on walking. And we did. My father is carrying a small spruce in his backpack. He has decided to plant a new tree beside a tree his grandfather planted, yeah, 130 years ago. It's an act of love. Generations come and go. Our lifespan is so small compared to the lifespan of the earth. I have been living in constant fear of losing my loved ones. This year, walking behind my dad, looking at his back, looking at his back, my acceptance is growing. One day I will lose my father. Nothing in our lives lasts forever. But now, my fear is being replaced by gratitude. What my father has shown me this year is that his spirit will always be here. His ancestors have shaped the path we have been following. And now I see that my father's footprints have left their mark as well. Now I know that we are not separated, dad and me. The moments of silence that we have shared brought us into a state of presence an awakening to a consciousness that all life is one. Being inside the blue ice caves, the view from the top of the mountain has opened up to this deeper understanding of why we are here. If we live to be 100 years old, an average European will have spent 90 years indoors. The word ecology comes from the word oikos, which means home. Nature is our home. Dad spent time with me outdoors to show me that nature is my home. Being in nature provided me health, meaning and companionship. The process of healing has started and now I can't sleep again. I have no more panic attacks. I am deeply inspired and I'm making a new film with the title, Songs of Earth. Today, more than half of the human population live in urban areas. By 2050, it's expected that 70% of us will. Coincident with urbanization, more and more people suffer from mental disorder. Growing evidence suggests that decreased exposure to nature is causing changes in psychological functioning. The last 25 years, the beautiful glacier branches have withdrawn 800 meters. I believe that my father's generation is the last to carry the deepest knowledge of how to take care of nature. Is the solution simply to restore the connection to ourselves by being more outdoors? We have to listen to the songs of Earth 
and the stories she tells. She keeps part of the secret of how to resolve trauma and fear. When you are surrounded by all other life forms that nature hosts, the feeling of loneliness disappears. We are part of nature, and nature is part of us. She offers us opportunities to heal. And therein, in nature itself, lies the solution to the biggest challenge of our time. By going outside, we go in. Deep within, we all carry the knowledge that we are a small part of a bigger whole, and that we, we are completely dependent on the well-being of planet Earth and all the life she provides for to survive. Our first love was nature. Let's not forget our first love. Tack.